Today, we will have simulation training based on the Neonatal Resuscitation Program 8th edition. Why resuscitation practice is important? It is estimated that 20.9% of all neonatal deaths are caused by birth asphyxia. Globally, 10% of the newborns require assistance to begin breathing at birth, including positive pressure ventilation, PPV. Effective neonatal resuscitation at birth can prevent a large proportion of neonatal deaths. The American Heart Association, AHA, and the American Academy of Pediatrics, AAP, developed guidelines for neonatal resuscitation to standardize the process and improve clinical outcomes. In 2020, the AHA updated the Neonatal Resuscitation Guideline. In 2021, the AAP and AHA issued the 8th edition of the NRP algorithm. Later in 2024, they revised and brought NRP instructor updates based on the latest research findings. In this video, the practice will follow these three instructions and implement equipment operating guidelines accordingly. The 8th edition NRP algorithm is listed as below. As the 8th NRP guideline did not mention the application of the APGAR score, this video will use the 2015 AAP guidelines recommendation regarding APGAR. Let's start the neonatal resuscitation program scenario. It is divided into five parts. Part one is preparation before resuscitation. Firstly, ask four pre-birth questions. What is the expected gestational age? Is the amniotic fluid clear? Are there any additional risk factors? What is the umbilical cord management plan? Thank you for coming. I call you because we are having a 38 weeks pregnant woman and with a concern of having an apnea baby. Okay, you told me 38 weeks and I also need to know what was the amniotic fluid? It was meconium. Okay, is there any risk factors we should be aware of? Currently, mom's having a 37.8 Celsius degree uh, mild fever, so we are trying to monitoring her temperature. Okay, uh, what was the umbilical core management plan? Is there any reason we could not do the delay core clamping for this baby? Currently, there's no maternal contraindicator, so we are trying to do 60 seconds delay core clamping, and if you see any reasons to stop, just let me know and I will do the clamp. Okay, I appreciate you helping us know. Resuscitation team, we are called for a 38 week infant. The amniotic fluid was meconium, and the baby is having a concerning sign of apnea. The mom has experienced a mild fever of 37.8 Celsius degrees, and the obstetrician attempted for delay called clamping. Now we will divide the resuscitation part for each one of you. Jay, I would like for you to uh, be head of the bed, manage the airway, and also listen early for a heart rate. And Leo, I would like for you to start positive pressure ventilation if needed. And Christina, and I would like for you to bring the baby over to the bed and start driving and stimulating the baby on the radium warmer and also place the pulse on and ECG on and be ready to do chest compressions if needed. And Vivian, could you please to be our recorder and also to be ready to drop any medication if needed. Okay, uh, now we will do the equipment preparation. Both supplies and equipment necessary for a complete resuscitation must be readily available for every birth. A general list of items to prepare is available from NRP called the Quick Equipment Checklist. You should be familiar with the location and use of all the supplies and equipment in your work area. We prepare supplies according to the NRP checklist, including warming items, airway management tools, stethoscopes, intubation packs, umbilical vein catheterization, UVC packs, and medication management tools. For equipment checks related to monitoring, warming, and ventilation, we will go into detail. This includes connecting the accessories, setting the parameters, and testing the device. Connect the monitor module C31. Connect the ECG sensor in the module and connect SPO2 sensor. Connect skin temperature sensor on radiant warmer. Take out the SPO2 strap and connect the strap to the SPO2 sensor. Select the right size of ECG electrode pads and attach the pads to the three lead ECG cable. Connect breathing circuit for PPV and nasal cannula for oxygen therapy. Prepare a humidifier if needed. 
Choose the right size of the mask and inflate the air cushion if necessary. Connect suction tubes to the back of the warmer. Attach the term or preterm size suction catheter for secretion clearance. Connect oxygen and air cylinders in case of transfer to the nursery or NICU for advanced life support after resuscitation. In the delivery room, we usually use a central gas supply system. Connect the oxygen supply and then the air supply to the wall. In case the central gas system does not have an air supply, use an additional air compressor. After connecting all the accessories, turn on radiant warmer for parameter settings. Set and confirm the upper and lower alarm limit according to the case. Set the alarm limits of SpO2 and pulse rate. Set the alarm limits of heart rate and respiratory rate from ECG. Set and confirm the skin temperature alarm limit if skin mode will be used. In BQ80, there are 10 sequence APGAR timers available for medical staff. Now, we already set up APGAR timer according to the Neonatal Resuscitation Program guideline. After setting up the physio parameters and APGAR timer, we can save the current configuration. You can choose to save current setting as user default for NEO, for PED, or simply user default, so that next time in a similar clinical situation, we do not have to reset all of the parameters again. According to the NRP algorithm, PPV should start within one minute after birth, and heart rate should be assessed after the first 15 and 30 seconds of PPV. So we set up the timer at 1 minute, 115 and 130 for PPV and heart rate check reminders. Secondly, an APGAR score is significant in assessing the baby's overall status at birth. NRP states that the APGAR score is not used to determine the need for initial resuscitation, but is useful for conveying information about the newborn's response to resuscitation. To correctly describe the baby's condition and provide accurate documentation, the AAP encourages the use of an expanded APGAR score reporting form that accounts for concurrent resuscitative interventions. See the reporting form example. After the parameter setting now, we will do the device test. For the suction part test, test at 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. For the PPV test, turn on the positive pressure valve, adjust the flow rate, test the sealing of the mask, and adjust the maximum pressure, Pmax, to test the desired PIP from the gauge, as the actual PIP is also related to flow rate. We will knob the T-piece PEEP valve and test the PEEP value. The PIP and PEEP actual pressure is displayed by the gauge, adjusting oxygen therapy flow rate. If a humidifier is connected, also check the humidification system. Test the temperature sensor and check the screen to see if the temperature is rising. Test the SpO2 sensor and check the screen for SpO2 value. If the test is good, we can turn on the warm-up mode and get ready for the baby.